In this session, we'll look at how to update an InfraWorks visualization when an attached Civil 3D corridor design has been changed. Once again, we're starting out here in InfraWorks. On my screen is a proposed roadway design that was imported from Civil 3D. If we take a quick look at the Data Sources panel, we can see the terrain and coverages that are coming in from that Civil 3D drawing. Right here we can see the drawings called Prop Corridor. I have also attached several shape files representing the roadway striping. If you're wondering how these items were imported, I have created a couple recordings that demonstrate the workflows. I will leave links to those recordings in the description for this one. Now, after importing a corridor design like this, you may be wondering how difficult it would be to update this InfoWorks model when changes are made back in Civil 3D. The answer is, it's easier than you might think. Let's take a look. Here in Civil 3D, I have opened that drawing called Prop Corridor. In addition to the proposed corridor, this drawing also includes the geometry representing the proposed roadway striping. I'd like to make a quick change to this design. For example, I'd like to eliminate this lane widening on the north side of the intersection. Since the intersection was created using the wizard, this will be fairly easy. I'm going to select the intersection by clicking this marker, and then in the contextual ribbon, I'll choose Edit Curb Returns. I will then select the northwest quadrant, Right here you can see where I have opted to use the lane widening. I'm going to turn that off, and then I'll close the dialog box. To update the corridor model, I'll click Recreate Corridor Regions. Then I want to make sure that the intersection is targeting the existing ground surface, so I'll select that, and I'll come down and choose Recreate. After the corridor has been rebuilt, I'm going to do a quick regen. I'll type RE and press Enter. This will also update that top surface. Let's back up and we'll center the revised corridor model on screen. At this point I would update my lane striping. Let's isolate those layers to make them a little easier to see. Here on the Home tab in the Layers panel I'll click the Layer Isolate button and I'll select the layer containing the white stripes, the white polygons, and these yellow stripes, and I'll press Enter. I will then back up. From here I would go through and edit this geometry by creating new offsets and fillets and doing some trimming. Rather than forcing you to watch me do all that, I'm simply going to fast forward in time to a point where the work is already done. Once the lane striping geometry has been updated, we will once again export these entities to shapefiles. I'm going to start with the closed polygons. Let's isolate that layer to make it easy to select. I will then use the command map export. I am going to overwrite the shapefile that is currently attached to the InfraWorks model. I'll click OK, and yes to overwrite. I'm going to export these entities as polygons. I'll choose Select Objects. I'll select the entities and press Enter. Since I'm exporting closed shapes, I'm going to go to the Options tab, and I'll choose Treat Closed Polylines as Polygons, and I'll click OK. Let's unisolate, and then I will isolate the white stripes layer, and I'll press Enter. I will then relaunch the Map Export command using the Recent Input menu. We'll overwrite the White Stripes shape file, and I'll click OK. I'm going to export these entities as lines. I'll click Select Objects, and we'll select these entities, and click OK. Finally, we'll unisolate, and I will isolate the yellow stripe layer. We'll go back into Map Export. We'll overwrite the yellow stripes shape file. We'll export these as lines. I'll click Select Objects. I'll select these entities, and I'll click OK. Now that I'm finished with my modifications to this design, I'm going to put the layers back the way they were. If I expand the Layers panel and open up my Layer States menu, in here I'll select a saved layer state that I created called Design and to Edit. This will restore the layer settings to the way they were when we first started working on this drawing. Let's save the file, and then we'll jump back over to InfraWorks. Here in InfraWorks, the only thing I need to do to update this visualization is to have InfraWorks take a fresh look at any connections that have been modified. We'll start with the terrain. Let me orbit this around and we'll zoom in to make it easier to see. I will then right click on this terrain, and since it's coming from a Civil 3D drawing, I'll choose Re Import. InfraWorks will then reach into that Civil 3D drawing and extract the latest version of that top surface. You can see how it's been updated. Let's zoom out and we'll orbit. Next, we'll take care of the coverages. I'll right-click on that Civil 3D connection and choose Re-Import. InfraWorks will then reach into the Civil 3D drawing and create new coverage areas based on the latest corridor design. The coverages will also leverage the same material styles I assigned when I first attached this drawing file. Let's zoom out and we'll orbit a little more. Finally, I'll take care of the roadway striping. 
Now I could do these one at a time by selecting each shape file and clicking the refresh button, or if I hold my shift key, I can select several shape files and refresh them all at one time. And that's it. When I'm finished updating the visualization, I will close the data sources panel and we'll orbit this around and take a closer look. So when using InfraWorks to visualize a civil 3D corridor design, we need only make attachments and assign render materials the first time the model is brought in. From then on, as the design changes, we can simply refresh any of the affected files to achieve an instant update of the visualization here in InfraWorks. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.